Hi, Mr. Thomas. This is Kimberly. Hi, Kimberly. You found out what their skills and what their ability was. Then they started putting all their energy and time into that. And when they did that, then most of them, you know, came very successful. Born on July 20th, 1949 in Mount Vernon, New York, Milton Collins Jr., also known as Junie, came into this world as the product of love shared between Winona McNair and Milton Collins Sr. In 1948, Winona and Milton Sr. moved from Plymouth, North Carolina to New York to embark on a new life and seek more opportunity. Following family and hopes of a better future, Mount Vernon became their bedrock. As the second of six siblings, Milton stood out as a quiet but athletic and dedicated kid. From the age of 14, he was trusted to care for his younger siblings and help establish order in what was a tight but bustling three-bedroom apartment for the family. Milton would soon become known across Mount Vernon for his athletic ability once he mastered the art of gymnastics at the Mount Vernon Boys Club. With recent recognition from Denzel Washington, Billy Thomas, and a host of other Mount Vernon greats, I knew it was time to fully capture the magnitude of his impact. I knew it was time to sit down with my uncle, Milton Collins Jr., and uncover the story of this hidden figure. You know, I grew up in a small town called um, Mount Vernon, it's a four square mile city, uh, and um, grew up in a um, in the projects. It was normal. I, I didn't think of of us having a lot of problems or anything of that sort. But we, you would you would say that it was sort of like a impoverished community uh, neighborhood. That, one would say, but to me it was normal. I felt um, that uh, I had a very stable environment with uh, a very strong mother who provided us with most of our basic needs, um, and uh, I'm happy about that. Uh, the, the, di the difference, I guess, with Mount Vernon was that, from what I understand, a lot of people from the South moved to, to Mount Vernon. Uh, and, and just to be away from the, from the, uh, the big city of, of New York City in the Bronx. Uh, some of the pivotal experiences that um, um, impacted my development, uh, again, relates to the Boys Club, where uh, I had to I had the great honor of having a great mentor called Billy Thomas, and um, uh, what was um, exciting, I, I would like to say back with an elementary school, I, I had the opportunity, I guess I'm a very a physical person, I had the opportunity to learn certain fundamentals in, uh, in gymnastics and tumbling, and I was, I was taught how to do back handsprings and front handsprings in elementary school at the Nathan Hill Elementary School. And then from that, I carried it over to the Boys Club, where again, I had the opportunity to be able to, to fine tune and to develop my, um, my tumbling 
and gymnastic skills. The thing about with the, the gymnastics and the tumbling and trampoline was that it gave me uh, that opportunity to just uh, develop my athletic proud, proudness. And, um, and from there I was able to, to take off from there. Um, from the boys club um, and uh, into middle school and high school I entered the gymnastics team. They were able to, uh, they had, a, they had a, a gymnastics team at the high school. They also had an outstanding track and basketball team in, at Mount Vernon and some very outstanding people came out of Mount Vernon in the area of track and in the area of, uh, of basketball and I initially started out my area of uh, expertise was in tumbling and, and tra trampoline and I was able to um, to do fairly well on the competitive level on the county level in tumbling and gymnastics with, which eventually led to me being able to do all of the other events such as the high bar vaulting long horse and uh, free exercise uh, the, the one area that I sort of was inattentive to was my my academics, which I, I sort of uh, and and uh, at now I wish I was was more attentive, you know, with my 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 schoolwork. But nevertheless, uh, I I was able to excel in the gymnastics and to compete on a fairly competitive level on on a county level, and I, and that always that was able to carry me. Uh, forward. The center of my world was just, you know, doing the gymnastics and trying to do the best that I could and to be the best that I could in, in, in gymnastics. When you heard the video of Denzel Washington talking about watching you flip, how does that make you feel in relation to, like at the time, did you have any idea, did you have any idea that you had that impact on other people? The only thing that I can remember was that um, in, in at the boys club when I, was, when I was on the trampoline that what was exhilarating for me was that I was, it, it appeared that I was pretty good at what I was doing and uh, I could, you know, it was almost like I had, to, I was on the, center, on the center stage at the boys club, they had this big gym and there would, I, I can remember that we had, there were times when uh, um, we, we would have performances and I think, if I recall, that, uh, that I was sort of like a star. But I didn't know that I was a star, I was just doing what I was doing and having fun at it. It was kind of suggested that I, by a couple of people, that I had the potential to go to Olympics, but that was so far away, I had no, no thoughts necessarily about uh, um, going to the Olympics, so all I wanted to do was just continue to do what I was doing and to excel in it as best as I could. Who is Billy Thomas? Uh, he was one of the, the great mentors for a lot of outstanding athletes uh, throughout Mount Vernon. Billy Thomas was also uh, an outstanding uh, quarterback himself and was an outstanding athlete, so I'm very honored to have had him as a, as a mentor to guide me and to guide many of many youngsters in, in the boys club. And a lot of people can attest to how great uh, a human being and how great a mentor that he was to, to many, many youngsters. Um, and uh, I'm very grateful to this day uh, that I had him as, as a support. What happens when we used to do a uh, gymnastic program for the whole club, uh, they were <laughs> everybody away for Milton. He we used to do uh, in concession about anywhere from ten to twenty back flips, and uh, and the kids used to enjoy him and they used to count them. So he he was very excited, and you know a lot of even today. Some of the guys that's over, they remember Milton being on the trampoline. The gymnastic team that we had was some of the first Afro-American young people to do gymnastics in high school. And 
that's where I think Milton broke a lot of records. And in terms of preparation, in terms of leaving high school and being able to move on into to college and being prepared for, for college, I think that that was one of the things that uh, was not uh, 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 a good thing. At that time, Billy Thomas, I believe, had gone into the service, and so I was really basically on my own, um, just doing my thing, just moving forward. Uh, wanting to go to college, was not prepared for college whatsoever, uh, and uh, in terms of the support to be able to, for anybody to be able to push me forward in terms of gymnastics, I was just on my own. I was, it was my understanding that, uh, at least in my mind, I was thinking that once I finished high school that I would have, a, you know, a number of scholarship offers. There were no athletic scholarships offered to me and, on, and in fact what I knew at that point then I needed to reach out to, to different colleges. I sent letters to, to various uh, colleges at that time that were sort of prominent in gymnastics. Uh, and interestingly enough, you know, at the time I here in Florida where I live at now and there was a uh, uh, the Miami Day Junior College was they were the junior champions in in gymnastics at that time and I, I so I wrote to them and, and also at that time then I finally got a half a scholarship which I had wrote to uh, Brooklyn LIU College University to see if I could uh, enter their program they had a fairly good program at uh, Long Island University at that time and I, I finally got accepted to Long Island Un University after taking some courses at, a, at, a, at a, a junior college in New York and I finally was able to, to be accepted to uh, Long Island University's Brooklyn campus. Where would you have liked to go to school had you it, been given the right resources and support? I would have liked to have gone to a, an outstanding uh, gymnastics college or university, Kansas University. I, I, when I wrote to them and I went down there for an interview. I didn't do very well on, on, on the college entrance and I guess I wasn't outstanding enough for them to, to go out on a limb to, for them to offer me a scholarship. I had decided not to, to, to go to Miami Day Junior College, which I probably would have done very well there, but I elected to come back to, to New York to be closer to the family and I entered the uh, uh, um, Brooklyn LIU campus and I was able to, uh, to do my thing there at, uh, at Long Island University. As Milton went on to perform gymnastics at a collegiate level, he would soon run into more challenges that disrupted the trajectory of his prosperous athletic career. My goal was to get into an outstanding gymnastics program so that Hopefully, I would be able to fine tune my skill set and and to develop my my ability so that I can move on to a, a more accelerated and higher level competitively. And LIU had a, I would say, it was a third grade level of uh, college competition. The day that I came to the college, the guy that I the reason that I came to that college was because they had an outstanding coach and. But by the time that I got to the school, the very day that I came to, to the school, I'd been accepted to the college, I, he was fired. And so um, that was a downer. Um, and so the, the person that was the coach was just, um, he was a former student himself, a former gymnast. So, I mean, uh, he, was, he was supportive, he was a good person, I don't have any problems with him. But basically, here it is again, I'm, on my, I'm basically on my own, just doing my own, uh, just really um, fine-tuning, and, and, and as far as I was concerned, I was training, basically, I guess, myself. But I, I want to give him credit. Um, the, 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 the atmosphere, the background was competitive. Um, but uh, it was disappointing that the, uh, the, the person that I came to, to, to the school 
who I thought would, would take me to the next level, he got fired. As far as I'm concerned, I, I, did, I did as well as I could on a, on a competitive level, uh, and on a regional level in terms of my, uh, 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 just upgrading and, and, and building my, uh, developing my, my gymnastic skills there. I'm, I'm not complaining, but it, it was what it was. And we and we, we competed, and um, we had to have some fairly good, outstanding uh, other competitors on the team. So um, I'm I'm okay with that. I didn't have a full scholarship, so uh, also at that time. So initially, I had to commute back and forth from from Brooklyn to Mount Vernon, and that was kind of stressful. But in in my first year, but in my second year, I was able to sort of pulled together resources to, to live on a dormitory and, uh, and so that I could really balance the, the gymnastics with my academics so that I could stay, be able to compete. The, the next two years, you know, I was staying on campus, I was able to um, keep my grades together and to compete to the best of my ability in my sophomore, in my sophomore, my junior year. The end of college was the end of my gymnastics career because in my senior year, and I guess that I, when I look back on it, it's interesting to think about, you know, your mental health is, is, is so important. And as I, as I reflect on it today, when you see the big time athletes now who see the importance of mental health and psychological well-being, I got frustrated in my senior year. I was not happy with the atmosphere at the college. I, I, I guess instinctually and unconsciously I realized that my career was coming to an end and that I, which wasn't something that I should have done, but I abruptly just quit the team. Uh, and so I did not compete in my senior year uh, at, uh, at, at, at LIU. And that, that was the end of my career at that point. But also at that time, too, a tragedy had struck in my family, in which my baby brother was, was tragically killed. And so all these different factors came into play. And I, was, I had just had enough, and I just decided to walk away, which probably wasn't the, the best thing for me to do. Thank you for sharing. I didn't stop school, so I continued to, to push through with school, you know, got my bachelor's degree, my master's degree. So school, I knew, was important. Um, what I did with that was a whole other different story, but, you know, I was um, smart enough or sensible enough to know that I needed to have some kind of uh, education, so I, I completed my bachelor's degree, I completed my master's degree, and, and the rest is history. Thinking back on you know the legacy and, and how you would summarize your gymnastics career, you know, what what does it feel like to know that you know Denzel Washington remembers the impact of what you did from all those decades ago, all those years ago? Recently, he has spoken and said that he remembers you doing flips and he remembers the impact that you had at the boys club in Mount Vernon on so many people and knowing that you helped to inspire him. How does that help you reframe or rethink of your legacy? Well, I, I realized on, you know, quietly that, you know, um, that I was able to, um, I guess, inspire some people in, in Mount Vernon as such. And, and I think that that's a good thing, you know, if, if anything, we're here to inspire people, we're here to, um, to be, you know, a, a good role model for people. So I, I guess I did my little part to, to be helpful, to be uh, an, an inspiration to, to the people that were around me. You know, I'm okay with that. I think, you know, it's, it's really special considering, you know, 
you inspire people like Denzel, who have given back to Mount Vernon in so many ways, and donated so much money, right. and he has been, you know, continued to be so involved in Mount Vernon. So I think, you know, as you think about your legacy, as you think about all that you've done, you have, you have inspired people who have invested millions of dollars into black youth, who are inspiring millions of people globally. So there is no Denzel, you know, without, without people in his life that he saw coming up like you. Milton, um, I can truly say, is the pioneer for this family. Uh, he set the standard in terms of being the first in the, of all the siblings to go to college. He kind of guided uh, and set the bar for myself and my, a lot of my other siblings as to wanting to go to college. And he was always there as, as I was growing up as a teenager uh, to help things, help out with the family, help things out, giving guidance, uh, and help me be the person who I am today. But the kids, you know, every, as a matter of fact, everybody around him was proud of him because he was doing something different. And the kids, his siblings, they they went with me a few times. We went out to the university. It was like we went out to the university to see him. A lot of times, you know, the family wasn't there at the gym to support him. But I always tried to be there because I I was one of his biggest cheerleaders. <laughs> he was so into it and he loved it and it made him happy, which made me happy. Your Uncle Milton in my book is a great man because he's done great things that a lot of these citizens in Mount Vernon is unaware of. But those that know him, Nothing Milton Collins has gone on to become a psychotherapist and open a community-based private mental health and substance abuse service called the Stress and Anxiety Center in Central Florida. With a focus on increasing care and visibility for people of color, he sought to normalize mental health care and use it to change people's lives for the better. Although retired, he continues to carry on his legacy. One of his sons has followed in his footsteps and opened a mental health private practice, and his granddaughter has even taken up gymnastics. I wanted to tell Milton Collins' story because heroism is about the hidden figures too. The pivotal pieces holding communities like Mount Vernon together are the individuals that may not necessarily go on to have the most money or highest accolades, but make others remember their greatness. Despite the challenges of growing up in Mount Vernon, a place full of talent, love, and resilience that does face disproportionate poverty, crime, and violence, Milton became a light for others. In the 1960s and 70s, it was rare to see Black people pursuing and thriving in gymnastics, but Milton sought to be that change. Many deserve to know the excellence that is packed into communities like Mount Vernon. Disinvestment in communities of color does not mean there are not individuals who are capable of incredible things. So believe in us. Support us. See the humanity in us. Thank you.